many years ago, we were hiking in the mountains. And we were due to be staying in a remote valley over a high mountain pass. And it was one of those days where the weather forecast was a little bit mixed, but we made the decision to go ahead anyway. And it all started very well, a lovely walk and a great adventure. But at the point at which we crossed that mountain pass, the weather took a turn for the worse. Visibility started to drop. Uh, The um, uh, temperature was falling and it was harder to find the right way and so that slowed us down. That meant that the light started to fail. And as it got darker, um, you know the feeling. The anxiety started to build. The worry, is this actually going to be okay or is this going to be a real problem? It went on and it went on until it was growing really quite dark and we were quite afraid. And then, on the hillside, we saw a tiny glimmer of light. And everything changed. And at that point, we were no longer worrying where we were going. We knew where we were going. And as we got closer, we realized that it was the warm glow of the window of the refuge that we were staying in. And we got to the door and knocked, and it was opened for us. And there was a warm welcome and a roaring fire and a hostel full of friendly people, the smell of good food, and the promise of warm beds. That glimmer of light changed everything. Jesus says, you are the light of the world. And that picture of a refuge, of in the midst of the darkness, a a place of welcome, a place of safety. I think it's a marvelous picture of what it is to be church. That is what we are doing here. At the heart of this world is a community full of people, a place of welcome and of safety and of shelter and of belonging. Here you can find refuge from the storm. You can be refreshed and restored. I think it's a wonderful picture of what it means to be church. Now, those words from Matthew 5 are right at the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount. And um, it is, of course, the greatest sermon ever preached. And I think what we have there, or, or what I'd like to propose, is that here is a statement, a sort of mission statement for us as church. A strategy, perhaps, for who we are and what we do. And in typical Jesus style, it is beautifully simple. However, the opening line is quite surprising. Jesus says, you are the light of the world. Surely some mistake. Jesus is the light of the world, isn't he? It's not me. It's not you, is it? And far be it from me to question Jesus, but isn't it quite a risky thing? to point people to ourselves. That what we should be doing is pointing people to Jesus. He is the one who can bring light into the darkness, who can offer people restoration and consolation. We want to be very careful of relying on ourselves or thinking that in any way we are the answer. And all of that is correct, I believe. Of course it's right to say, Jesus is the light of the world. He says it in John 8. I am the light of the world. And it's not just a figure of speech. Jesus literally brings enlightenment into history. That history changes as a result of his life. And he enlightens our lives too. But, Again, there in John 8, he goes on and says, Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Not just that they'll walk in the light, but they will have the light, you see? Now, obviously, the key phrase there is whoever follows me. I mean, literally, whoever becomes my disciple. 
But if we are willing to do that, if we hear his words and put them into practice, then not only do we walk in the light, but we become a light in our world. That the church, when it is faithful to its calling, when it follows in the way of Christ, it is light in its world, in its community. And you, when you are disciples of Jesus, you are lights in your world. And so he says, if you live this way, if you follow in the way of Christ, you will be a light in this world. And it is a high calling, and yet it is who we are called to be. He uses these two pictures. The first is a hilltop town. He says a town or a city built on a hill cannot be hidden. And if you think of the picture, I don't know where you might have been where you've seen that. I think of Italy and those hilltop villages. But actually, hilltops are good places to build towns. And so over much of the world, that's where you'll find them. And at the, uh, in the darkness, the lights of that town will shine out and will draw people in. And that's a picture of us as church. We exist as a community in the heart of our own world, shining out a better way of life. Church is a beacon of hope and love. And that's not simply in the kindness that you find here, in the generosity of our welcome. It's because Jesus is at the heart of that. That gospel message of reconciliation with God is at the heart of all that we do. And if you are part of that community, to inhabit that community is to be part of showing the world Jesus' way of life. We should never take for granted the way that our lives are enriched by being part of a community like this. If you've been part of church for a long time, it's easy to think that this is usual, but it isn't. That you are surrounded by, pe by people who care for you, who would do almost anything for you. A place where you are loved and welcome and belong. Where people invest in your life. There's no better way for children to be raised than in a community of grace and generosity like this. When church lives out its calling to be like Christ, it is a light in the world. And that invitation is for everyone. In a world which longs for community that longs for belonging and identity, here it is. But it takes work and sacrifice and selflessness from each of us. I suppose there's a question. Are you willing to invest in this? Will you give of yourself to build a community which is a light in this world and which reveals the character of God to those who seek it? So there's the picture of the city on a hill, and then there's this other picture of a lamp on a stand. Verse 15, neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. Now, I feel like if the first picture is the picture of a community, a church, then the picture of the lamp on the stand is much more you as an individual. That wherever you find yourself, in your workplace or your school or even in your family, if you model your life in the way of Christ, then you are a light to that place. You are that glimpse of hope, of love and compassion, which points to Jesus. Don't be ashamed. We live in a world which can find faith and the way of Christ difficult to understand. But it is an astonishing thing. Dietrich Bonhoeffer once famously said, live in such a way that makes people question their unbelief. Live in such a way that makes people question their prejudices about faith. You are a lamp on a stand. Don't allow it to be hidden. Let it shine out because it is a light in a needy world. Let's just remember what we're talking about here, because that experience of walking in the darkness that I painted at the beginning, that picture of kind of walking in the wilderness of 
night of the feelings of fear and confusion and vulnerability, of lostness and isolation. That is the experience of life for many people. And remember how that glimpse of light transformed everything. And this church, and you as an individual, your calling is to be that light. It's an astonishing calling to have. Jesus is the light of the world. He is the source of life and love and grace and truth. In Christ, we find belonging and identity. In Christ, you see the very heart of God, and it is a heart full of love. But each of us is called to live that out, to put that into practice in our own lives. And in doing so, we become just a little glimpse of light in a dark world. So this is who we are. This is our calling. In the heart of a community where many people are far from home, this place of light and love and welcome and hospitality, this is a community of grace, a place of welcome which reveals the reality of God. And we are each called to live in a way that makes people question their unbelief. And if we live like this, then our lives will be a signpost to God. Verse 16. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. So, we need to work really hard at being church. But we don't do that just for ourselves, for the benefit that we get from that. We do that in order to build a community which blesses others, for which others are grateful that we exist. When you are serving and giving and being generous or simply making coffee or caring for others, you are doing that as part of letting your light shine so that people might give thanks and praise to God as a result of that. Everything that we do has a gospel purpose. There's a lovely phrase. And I'd love you to sort of reflect on this. The phrase is this. Be the church that you want to see in the world. Be the church that you want to see in the world. Imagine that you had come to Chatterday, you'd moved into the place, and you were feeling lost and isolated, and you wanted to find belonging. What's the church that you would want to find here? Because that's who we are called to be. Jesus says, you are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand and it gives light to everyone. In the same way, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Amen.